Let's talk about how to pass the Haynes Watts video interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job Read English here with another video to help you get hired. Today we're going to be talking about the professional services firms Haynes Watts and how you can pass their video interview. We're going to go through their recruitment process, the most common questions asked and also other questions that we came across which we found really interesting which is going to tell you how to answer in a rapid fire round. As ever, if you want access to our research note, the latest recruitment process for 2022 and also courses, handouts and books to help you give you the best chance of success for passing your Haynes Watts video interview, check out the Pass the Interview Pack just for Haynes Watts down in the description below. Let's get started. So for the recruitment process, candidates reported that the process took around three months to complete. The first stage is a telephone interview, which is general interview questions about your skills and experience. The next interview is usually in person, which is when you will get asked more technical questions. So what were the most common questions asked? Well, we came across six. These were questions that candidates reported being asked multiple times in the past six months. Question number one, why Haynes Watts? And if you want an in-depth way to answer this question, as well as a free download to fill out your own answer, check out the card up in the top right hand corner. So when you're talking about why do you want to work for this company, we're going to assume you have about two or three minutes to answer this question. All you want to think about is you want to pick out five or six unique facts about the company. What do we mean when we say that they're unique? Well, you might say Haynes Watts has 5,000 staff members or had X million in revenue or is engaged in a particular project or has a certain client. These are facts that can only be said about Haynes Watts. They couldn't be said about any other company. This is opposed to generic answers where you might say, well, it's a big company, it's famous, I get to work with great staff, this would be a great experience for me. And these are really common mistakes that I see when candidates are asking questions about why they want to work for the company. Five or six facts should be more than enough. I would suggest that you try to make them different facts rather than all the same, so for example, all about revenue or about clients or projects and so on and so forth. And what you wanna make sure that you do is, is try to relate what you're talking about in terms of the facts at least once or twice to your own personal experience and what's going on with you so it might be something to do with their corporate social responsibility their diversity the clients that they work with their projects otherwise you might find that as you're reading out this list of facts it just basically just sounds like a shopping list it doesn't sound very personal at all whereas when we relate something personally to us it just gives us a little bit of an edge and a little bit of a different answer question two why do you want to do this job again if you want an in-depth answer to this check out the card up in the top right hand corner so when talking about why you want to work in this role you want to split your answer into two parts the first part is what would you do the second part is why are you good for it now a common mistake that candidates make when they're answering this question is they basically just talk about themselves they talk about how awesome they are and how brilliant they are and how they'd be really really good for the job but what they tend to miss out is they don't actually explain what they would do in the job so they don't talk about well these are the daily tasks i'd have to do these are the weekly tasks i would have to carry out these are the things that i would be expected to do now there are two reasons why we want to start off by answering our question this way. Number one, if you're doing a video interview, the algorithm is actually going to just be picking out keywords like teamwork or Excel or ACA or accounting or whatever it is. They're going to be looking for particular words that you're saying which match up with the job description. The second thing is a lot of people who apply for jobs don't actually know what it is that they're doing. So it's really good to demonstrate that. Now in the second part of your answer, you're trying to pick out three or four big skills that you feel are really important in this job, which again come from the job description, and then you're trying to demonstrate an experience of those skills. So it could be an experience of teamwork, it could be an experience of using Excel, it could be an experience of previous accounting work that you've done. Whatever it is, make sure that you provide proof or an experience that you've done this, because otherwise it's really just an opinion. It's like me saying, well, I'm an excellent sprinter. Well, the first thing you're going to want to say is, um, well, according to what? I mean, do you have a video? And then there's me with the same bulb. That never happened. But that would be cool. Question number three, have you ever led a team? So this is a competency-based question using situation, task, action, result. So what this means is, you know, what were you doing? What's the specifics? What are the actions that you took? And what's the result that you get? 
Now what you want to remember with competency based questions is you really want to put the majority of the emphasis on the actions that you took. This should be 70% of your answer. Why is this? Well, have you ever led a team is basically saying, tell me about your examples of leadership. So when you're answering something like this, really what you want to do is you want to be saying what are the things that you did that made you a really good leader. So how you can do this is basically saying, well, I was leading a project at university and we had to do a financial analysis of Apple and these are the ways that I led the team. You know, I split out my resources, I made sure that we had regular meetings, I fact-checked the work that people were doing, I stepped in to help whenever it was needed. This is where the majority of your answer should go. Now, a common mistake that I see is basically people spend too long explaining about what they were doing in a general context, like the details about the particular project and whether they might talk too much about what other people did. And really, who's the employer interested in? You! They want to know all about you and what you did. So make sure you put an emphasis on that. If you're not sure about what are great leadership skills, then just pop it into Google. Question number four, what is your five year plan? Now generally professional services tend to be relatively unique in the sense that if we're talking about audit or taxation, then you're gonna be wanting to carry out some sort of chartered qualification, which takes about three years. Consultancy, depending on what you're doing, would be slightly different. You might have a shorter training contract, you may not have so much formal qualification which you need to carry out. So the first thing that I would say is, do you have any kind of formal qualification or training that you have to go for? If not, then really your five year plan is just to get through your you know, to complete your training as a graduate. And then you'd probably move on to maybe you'd be an associate, then a senior associate, then a manager, a senior manager, a director, and then a partner, and so on and so forth. But it's worth just looking into what is the hierarchical structure of a professional services firm. If you're talking about the big four, then generally by the time you've been with a business for five years, you'd be expected to be in some sort of management role, to be overseeing clients, leading a team, and training other graduates into the position which you now hold to make sure you can get them into the leadership chain. Question number five, tell us about yourself. Personal introduction, want to know more on a free worksheet? You guessed it, click up in the top right hand corner. A really good personal introduction is a great place to start. If you've never done an interview or if you're a little bit rusty and you're not really sure what to do, then a great personal introduction is a really good place to start because it forms a solid foundation for being able to sell yourself. And we split up our personal introduction into six parts, which is namely, who are you? What have you done? What would you like to do? Work experience? extracurriculars and volunteering, and finally hobbies and interests. So these are sort of the six things that you wanna be splitting it into. So who you, are, who you are is basically, I'm studying X at Y. What have you done is like the last three to five years. So if you're a professional, it could be where you have worked. If you're a student, it could be where you studied before, whether that be a master's, a bachelor's, or A-levels, or whatever exam is specific to where you're from. What you would like to do, which is probably something that you'd leave off here, or you'd amend to say about the position that you're working at Haynes Watts, there's a good thing to get into the frame of, because a lot of people are applying to do a very particular job. Then about your work experience, your extracurricular and volunteering activity, and your skills and interests. No work experience, fine. No extracurriculars and volunteering experience. If you're a graduate, seriously, go out and get some. So sometimes I've seen comments from students who are like, oh, I don't have any of this experience. Really? I mean, go out and get some. That's really quite important. What a, an employer really wants to see is, have you done anything beyond your studies? And if not, why not? Question number six, what are your strengths and weaknesses? So I would say you should, if you had to answer this all in one question, I would pick out two strengths, one weakness. The strengths should be from the job description. So they should be the skills that you really feel is something that you can quite clearly demonstrate you've got a good hold of based upon your experience. For your weakness, I always like to pick weaknesses that I think are teachable, are relevant and are also authentic. And what I mean by that is, is that there's no point picking out a weakness that to most people sounds disingenuous or false, like I work too hard, I have a poor work-life balance, I find it difficult to say no. I mean, these are answers that I've heard time and time again and very often I tend to ask back the question, is that actually true? I mean, is that really your biggest weakness? And they'll say, oh no, actually sometimes I can be a little bit of a perfectionist or I can be a bit disorganized. It's really important when you're delivering interview answers, even though I understand that you're nervous and you sort of have this expectation about your audience when you're thinking, well, what is it that they really want me to say? I encourage you to speak your truth. 
and to have an element in authenticity in what you're doing. The reason being is actually quite simple in that if you're interested and you feel like you're talking about something which is actually the truth and is relevant to you, you're much more likely to sound truthful, authentic, interesting and engaging. Whereas if you're not, then you won't. Now, the thing with the biggest weakness is don't think about weakness, think about lessons. So it could be you're a bit disorganized, so you diarize, you manage your time and you outsource for help. It could be that you have poor time management skills, so you diarize, you make sure you go to bed early and you increase the healthiness of your diet and also going out to the gym so you have greater energy levels. The point is not about the weakness itself, it's like, okay, I have identified that I am not good at this thing, now I am going to do these actions to make sure I am better at this thing. So next up, here are four questions to answer in a rapid fire round. What skills do you have? Match these to the job description. What past experiences will help you with this role? Now I'm really speaking to anybody who either hasn't had relevant work experience for Haynes Watts or doesn't think so or has no work experience. So non-relevant, a lot of students will have had service-based jobs. So you're working in a restaurant, a fast food place, uh, a takeaway, a coffee shop, whatever it is, these are all relevant to the job. They're good for teamwork, working under pressure, numeracy, problem solving skills, client facing skills. Customer service and general service based jobs to the public are some of the most challenging jobs that you can do, particularly at a young age. Uh, I can remember doing service based jobs and just finding it really stressful, but it's really good for multitasking, being able to, good, to be good to deal with people. So use those transferable skills. If you don't have any work experience, then think about your extracurriculars and your volunteering roles. If you don't have any, make sure you get some. Tell us about a recent piece of accounting news. You can use Accountancy Age for this. So accountancyage.com. Find a piece of business news, summarize it and speak on it. What makes us different from our competition? Definitely something to do some research. Look at Accountancy Age, look at general accounting company rankings and try and find out where specifically they're concentrating on, what industries they concentrate on, what particular clients it is that they're looking for, something along these lines. Guys, I hope that you found this video enjoyable. If you here, if you have, make sure to like the video, drop us a comment down below. Uh, how did we help you with your Haynes Watch video interview? Do you have it? Were we accurate? What other videos could we do? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I wish you the best of luck. See you later.